Did you know that you can create animated titles for your social media or your presentations using Adobe Express? Let me show you how. Let's start with a blank canvas or a blank page that we can start building from. So the first thing that you want to do is go onto your brand kit or upload the background image that you want. So I'm going to go into my brand kit and look for the assets that we use for this background. Once I find it, I'm gonna select it and make sure that I set page as background. If you don't have any backgrounds, I recommend checking out the elements tab under backgrounds and looking for a variety of backgrounds that you can use as an option. But let's go back to what we already have here because we want this to be on brand. Next thing that you wanna do is you're gonna go in and add some elements. So go back to the element tab and we're gonna add some shapes. For now, we're just gonna add a square and what we're gonna do is we're gonna enlarge this a little bit and now we're going to rotate this. So we kinda wanna create that angled effect like we had earlier. And now you're gonna want to increase this as big as possible so that you have enough space here for your type. Next, you wanna do is a couple of things. You can change the fill color to white and then you can copy paste, Command C, Command V on your Macs or you can right click. I'm gonna click on copy and paste and now my new graphic is there my new rectangle now all i want to do is i'm just going to move it over a little bit so that i can change the color behind that this is just your personal preference you can always have just one solid color now i'm going to my brand palette or my brand kit colors and i'm going to add one of these colors over here so that way we kind of have this overlay that kind of looks like it's an arrow next you want to select those two shapes that we just created and you're going to group them now we're going to start adding a little bit of animations you're going to make sure that both of those shapes are grouped go to animations and you want to select something that kind of slides in and what i recommend is making it slide from right to left that way it kind of just makes a little bit more sense visually so it's kind of using that pointing arrow to guide the eye and bring this in here next what we're going to do is we're going to add this background again so that we can use it for our type animation you're going to go back to either the backgrounds or your brand kit where you found this element or upload it again and now I have this again so what I would recommend is start to crop this a little bit and we'll adjust this a little bit more in just a second for now just leave it as is next what you want to do is add text click on add your text and give it a title so for now we're just going to do step one and then we're also going to duplicate this and now we're going to add kind of like our title card or what we want for this Let's make this upper type a little bit smaller because we want more of the focus on the actual text over here. And next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a much bolder effect. Black seems to work well, and now I'm going to give it an outline. However, it's not really doing that cutout effect like I want it to. So what I'm going to do is going to go into shape and click on cutout text this is where the text starts to get cut out and now what we're doing is we're actually seeing a shape fill so you start to see this yellow color behind the type and if i increase the shape size you start to see that it's starting to cover some of the background what you want to do is make sure that that shape fill is the same exact color as your background typically what works best is a solid white background especially if you're using something that's very bold and colorful like we are here we want to make sure that we can retain as much legibility by not having too many contrasting colors so once I added my type here, my top text started to disappear a little bit and that's okay. What we want to make sure is that we bring this step one up higher so that it's easier to read. And of course we can see it now. I'm going to bring this a little bit, make it a little bit smaller. And now we can start making some tweaks to make sure that the background is only showing on the type. So what I'm doing is I have that background layer selected and I just brought this down a little bit more so that it just covers this this type area that we're wanting to focus on. Here is where you can go in and click on crop and freeform adjust your background. So if you want it to look like it's a little bit more of an extension of the actual background, this is how you can start going in and making these adjustments. This looks good. I'm just gonna click out of this page or out of this section. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to start adding some animations to the type. I'm gonna click on the background of the word reflect and I'm gonna go 
into animation. Once we go into animation, you want to think about whether you want it to be an in, a loop, or an out. I recommend it being more an in animation or a loop, but if you do a loop, it has to be very subtle, kind of like our example. So the example that I chose was blob. And once I select it, you'll start to see that it kind of gets out of the frame and we will adjust that shortly. For now, what I want to do is just decrease the speed of the background movement so that way it doesn't get too much and it's still legible. You can adjust the intensity City so that it's not as intense but still subtle enough to where you can see the difference. Now as we were seeing the animation and we can scroll through the timeline bar here on the bottom, you can see that the background was peeking past this bounding box from the type. So here's a little hack that you can do. If you can't extend the background from the type like we had here on the word reflect and go back to your shape, if you can't extend it past that 100% or if it starts to go into some of these other elements, what I recommend is just adding another shape and rectangle works perfectly fine where you're going to kind of extend and block a little bit of that background. This is why it helps to have it as a white color because it won't contrast as much and that way you can kind of block it off from showing up on for this background. So what I'm doing now is I'm duplicating that so that way it shows on the top and bottom. And if I was to hit play, now you see that it doesn't peak. But here's where you need to start using the timeline. If I scroll all the way to the front, you can start seeing all of these elements show up and it looks really bad. So what we want to do is make sure you have the toggle switch on to show your layer timing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrub my timeline or just kind of drag it over to the point where this kind of pointed arrow that we created has stopped being animated. Once we're there, I can click on my scrub head over here and make sure that I have all of these elements selected. So meaning the ones that I don't want to show up just yet, I want to make sure I select them and bring them all to the same area where I was showing as a moment ago to make sure that everything shows in at the same time. Now, if I go back to the animation, we can still see that the background is showing up. So we can go back to our little area over here and do the same for the background. Now, if I click play, we can see how that's starting to show. Now I can go in and add a little bit more dynamic effects. So I'm going to animate the step one. So I have the type selected. I'm going to animation and I want it to slide in. So I selected slide in and I can actually make it come in from the left. I can give it a little bit more of an energetic feel and that looks great. Next, we can get a little bit more creative. You want to make sure that you're not taking too long if you're using these for animations or an overlay, but you can add an out state with a typewriter. So it kind of just erases it that way. Now we can add a similar effect here with reflect. And I love the typewriter effect because it actually kind of creates more engaging visual effect with type. So what I did is I selected this reflect word that had that dynamic background and gave it an in state of typewriter. Now I want to give it an out state as well. And let's say I just wanted the slide away. This is where it gets a little tricky, but if you can hack this in a way where it works seamless, your titles or your animations are going to look amazing using Adobe Express. So go into your scrubber where you kind of see as it starts to shift away that the background starts to show. So what you want to do is go back to this background layer and make sure that you just drag this off to not be visible right before it starts to fade away so that you end up with an effect where it's almost kind of just removing everything from it and you end up with that blank state. So let's take a look at what our final design looks like. And if you see some like here when we were playing on some of the design and I noticed that the background was peaking a little bit from this type, you can always go in, select that background layer and extend it a little bit higher so that as it's doing the animation on the background, it won't peak past your design. If you see it peek out in other areas, that means you just need to extend this little white area that you've added and make sure that it's not peeking over the elements that you don't want to. And that's how you make an animated title card or an animated transition for your presentations. ¿Te gustó este video? Did you like this video? Well, make sure that you hit the little campanita, the little bell and subscribe. So that way you can stay connected for the next time that I post a new video. And of course, please share this with anyone that might find this valuable.